Everyone, I'd like to thank uh, the AACR and the Program Committee at San Antonio uh, for inviting me to, pre to present the information on our trial uh, ECOG Acrin 4112, which looked at uh, magnetic res resonance imaging and a 12 gene assay to try to optimize local therapy for women with DCIS. And the, we are presenting now the five-year results. I have no financial relationships to disclose. Um, and DCIS, as you all are aware, I'm sure, is a non-invasive lesion where uh, there is a lot of discussion about optimization of local therapy because it's clear that some patients are being overtreated. So the purpose of our trial was partly to address this need. Uh, I'm going to focus more on the DCIS score results rather than the MRI results, which were already published actually in 2016. So DCIS score is a 12-gene assay that's derived from the 21-gene recurrence score developed by Genomic Health. Um, it was validated in E5194, the ECOG trial. That was a single-arm trial um, treating women without radiotherapy selected based on the expectation of low risk. And the DCIS score nicely separated uh, women who had a uh, higher risk of recurrence, who had higher intermediate DCIS scores from those with a low risk of recurrence. And subsequent validation of these results has come from several sources, including population-based sources. So our hypotheses, the first uh, uh, block of text actually refers to the MRI goals, and I will skip those since our results are being presented mainly on the ipsilateral breast events that were experienced by women who entered the second portion of the trial uh, where DCIS score was used to guide the, the recommendation for radiotherapy. So women with a low score, 39 or less, sorry, less than 39, uh, were received a recommendation to forego radiation, uh, and those with a higher score received a recommendation to undergo radiation. Uh, the eligibility was essentially women who were diagnosed uh, based on a mammographic lesion, imaging lesion, uh, with a core needle biopsy. Uh, they uh, did, could not have microinvasion in the lesion. Uh, they had to be eligible for breast conservation and uh, able to undergo MRI. Uh, prior uh, invasive ca cancer history was an exclusion, uh, or DCIS history. So. Eligible participants were, were registered. They underwent the MRI and the surgical treatment as planned and as described in our prior publication. Uh, those who had final margins of two millimeters or greater uh, then um, received a DCIS score result based on the surgical sample and uh, were, were um, advised to either forego or receive radiation as I described and endocrine therapy was used per standards of care. Uh, this is the, the early part of the trial again, and these results, as I said, have been published. Uh, there were 339 women who were registered to the trial. 285 underwent uh, wide local excision, breast conserving surgery, uh, as the first procedure, and of those, 274 received it as their final procedure. Uh, these patients uh, then received their DCIS score, but 103 were not, did not qualify for the DCIS score measurement, either because they had invasive disease in their surgical resection specimen, or an uh, inadequate margin, or the score was not available, probably because of lack of residual DCIS in the surgical specimen. Uh, so the final population is shown here, 171 women, just over 50% of the initial population of 339. And about, they were divided about equally into those with a low DCIS score and those with an intermediate or high DCIS score, which I'm going to call higher score. Uh, and uh, they were quite adherent to the rec uh, radio, radiotherapy recommendation. The low score uh, patients generally agreed to omit radiotherapy, and the higher score patients generally agreed to receive it, so that the overall uh, the overall um, adherence rate to the radiation recommendation was actually 93%. Um, these are the ipsilateral breast events at a uh, median follow-up of five years, both invasive and DCIS. Uh, for the overall group of 171 women, uh, there, were, there were about 5% uh, uh, ipsilateral breast events. Um, in the low uh, DCIS score group who didn't receive radiation, 
uh, that rate was again about 5%, and in the intermediate high score group, it was 4.3%. So uh, in the overall, um, and then the intermediate high score group, remember, did receive radiation. So those low results are with the use of radiation. Uh, the second plot is looking at the women who were adherent, and because most women were adherent, these estimates are very similar uh, to the estimates for the uh, entire group of 171 women, uh, very little difference. And again, the low, risks, uh, low DCIS score group and the high DCIS score group had very remarkably similar event rates, which is surprising, but one has to remember that the high score group received radiotherapy. Uh, by age, uh, the results are of interest because we know that women, younger women are at higher risk for, um, for recurrence, and, uh, but we had very few younger women, just 33 who were under 50 years of age. Uh, they had two ipsilateral breast events, both were invasive. In the older women, there were six ipsilateral breast events and two were invasive. Um, and they were equally divided between the low score and the high score groups. So in conclusion, the DCIS score identified about 50% of patients as eligible for emission of radiotherapy. Uh, adherence to radiotherapy recommendations was very good. Uh, the five-year ipsilateral breast event rate in women with intermediate or high score uh, DCIS was markedly lower than what has been reported in previous studies. In 5194, that rate was almost 17% at five years. And in this trial, uh, where radiation was used for this group of patients, uh, it was 5%. Uh, when DCIS score was low, however, the results were very similar to previous trials where uh, radiation was not used and the designation of low risk was based on either grade or DCIS score, similar um, ipsilateral breast events uh, for the low score group. So the major difference really is in that intermediate high score group with the use of radiotherapy. Um, analysis of 10 year outcomes is very important because this is something that may evolve over time uh, and we will uh, expect to see more events during that period and also larger prospective trials are needed which are on, designs are under consideration at the moment. Uh, so with that I would like to thank patients who participated in the study, all the sites and coordinators, uh, in particular uh, the ecog Akron uh, group, of course, but uh, I'd like to remember Dr. Larry Solon, who uh, enunciated many of these concepts and performed the first trials executing them. Um, so I'd like to recognize his contributions.